Jonathan. Lots of points arise there, and I hope there'll be time to ask one or two questions arising from that. But we must move on to um, our next panelist, uh, P.S. Jayakumar, who's uh, the MD and CEO of the Bank of Baroda, but uh, also P.S. with lots of experience in all sorts of areas uh, on the way to doing that, and uh, including in very small or smaller lending uh, to poorer people. So we look forward very much to you sharing uh, your thoughts, please, P.S. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just by way of introduction, I'm the CEO, Managing Director and CEO of Bank of Baroda, which is a state-owned bank and among the larger banks in the country. Uh, but prior to coming to, prior to joining Bank of Baroda, and I'm one of the first people from the private sector to move to the government, uh, I was working for about 25 years in City Bank in various roles, both here in India and elsewhere, and in which time I had a lot of work with IFC on a number of new initiatives, interesting things. But thereafter, I decided to wear an entrepreneurial hat, and I set up a, a company which was involved in construction of affordable housing, and which also incidentally happens to be, a, which is also support, is an IFC investing company. And the question that was raised always is whether you could have low-cost housing, you know, houses that cost $15,000 to $20,000, which can actually be energy efficient. And so we went about, that, went about that goal, partly through the use of technology in the way, you know, the, 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 the building intelligent management systems are designed today that provides for enormous amount of computational capability that then results in a lot of environmentally sensitive decisions, including the way the buildings are placed, and also a lot of things related to what is lean manufacturing techniques. As we went through the process, one of the things we did was to be the, we are probably the first company in Asia to have the certification for a low cost housing for what is called as an edge, strand, edge standard of IFC. And related to many other forms of certification that exist and many of which I find it difficult to comprehend, what we did with respect to edge standard was essentially a metrics of uh, activities, intervention that you could do, the benefit they would provide, and the cost they would incur. And so then once you decided to allocate a certain cost for the effort relating to making the buildings environmentally efficient, which essentially means you would spend 50% less uh, fresh water compared to the, to the model value, and will spend 67%, 33% less power compared to the model value, then there is an opportunity to decide whether you want to use reflective painting or you want to put T3 fans and then come with a combination where at $20 per square foot, we were able to achieve those objectives. So that was an interesting experience, and then I took upon the role of evangelizing this in the, in the developer community. Uh, but I think uh, a certain, but there aren't really any real funding available to developers in India for supporting any kind of green standards. They're generally viewed with a lot of suspicion, probably they deserve it, and so it is where it is. The second area is once I joined uh, Bank of Baroda, we started working, looking at uh, obviously, you know, our Prime Minister is a green warrior. There's a huge task set out with respect to uh, solar, renewable energy, and various other things that he's pushing for, and the amount of money that's required is quite a lot. And so we have done our own part with respect to those activities, and probably we funded about 90 billion Indian rupees in these various initiatives, but they're pretty much like other things, so I don't want to spend time on them. But one of the unique, pro couple of unique projects I want to discuss about, there's one with respect to financing as a, as a social inclusion effort. So there is this, uh, I want to imagine a place which is near the seaside, subjected to heavy monsoon, and which is essentially a marshland. And so during the monsoon period, the whole place gets flooded up with about six to eight feet of water, and then the water recedes, and then the, the tribal people called the Agarias come over there and set the salt back. And so for them, every monsoon, they, they, they lose whatever they've done, and every time they restart the activity once more. And there is a wonderful organization called SEVA, which have been working with the grassroots, uh, especially in the area of women empowerment, women employment. And we then got partnered with them, and IFC had introduced us to SEVA, and also helped us in putting together the structure of the transaction, whereby what essentially we did was, apart from making finance available, we also worked with the CSR funds our customers have got, which would enable us to reduce the cost of funding. We then went another step further as we started engaging with the government, it seemed apparent that if we were going to make an order for a large amount of these uh, panels and the systems, then there was a potential to reduce the cost by about 30-35%, uh, just by means of better procurement relative to what an NGO could procure. So that became the next step. And then, 
obviously the most important thing around it is around how do we get a fair price for the people so that income increases and that's a sub separate subject. But one of the things that I, we chanced upon as we went about with our branch expansion is a, is a, is a kind of a, a prefabricated branches which can be assembled and disassembled and very energy efficient solar panels, thermally insulated, you know, uh, and all of that stuff. And then we thought, why not take this, make this modification, and provide housing to the same set of people. So then through a combination of these things, we can actually achieve both the green objective on one side and, and a significant improvement in the living standards because costs are reduced or the living conditions improve. So that's one area which has been interesting. The other area that has been interesting to me is this whole, 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 whole area around agricultural financing. Now traditionally, the approach to agricultural financing in India has been a set of targets is set, gets calmed down, and everybody is discussing whether we meet the targets. But then now the discussions are around not about targets, but about how we make financial impact and how do we actually double the farmer's income, which is the goal that has been set by our prime minister. So as we start getting into that discussion, we've been trying to put together an ecosystem of micro-irrigation, solvable fertilizer, bringing together a bunch of people who are making efficient storage system and efficient logistic systems, and whereas we in this country are known for, uh, for the financial tech industry started by young people, there's a whole sort of things happening in the real sector which are equally, if not more, exciting. And so as we start drilling down that, one of the areas in which we can make a significant contribution is micro-irrigation because it's got, a, it's got an ability to save water at the same time, provide more land available for, for development. But the challenge we have in, this, in our country is that Drip irrigation is enormously subsidized, 90% subsidy. So the, the size of the drip irrigation market is decided by the extent of the subsidy. And in a sense, it's just acted against the desire to expand. So we now engage with one, one of the state governments saying that why don't we look at a bond that would effectively securitize the future set of subsidies they have it for the next five years and bring that investment forward because the return to the farmers happen almost immediately and then we can over a period of time get paid. And that notion is attractive to a lot of people because that ensures the money is not diverted, it goes for its intended purpose, and a bank could play a role in that. So a number of intervention variables which effectively have a green element component to it in form of power or in terms of soluble fertilizer or in terms of organic development, which we can bring together. And those notions are, to my mind, extremely exciting and things that we can work upon. Uh, Jonathan, you spoke about the risk, but let me tell you the risk has as, as I see it in my role. And the risk is that not all organizations are at the same level of uh, you know, sophistication. And so what we need to do is to build greater capability around analyzing the environmental impact of the projects that we finance. And then how do we get ourselves to the same stage of evaluation, same stage of uh, criteria building, you know, intervention, et cetera, et cetera. And so a lot of my effort now is to try to understand this subject and get ourselves better trained get our lending officers better trained and get a higher degree of sensitization around this subject. So that's one. And finally, we've been trying to work on getting a green deposit uh, bond, I mean, deposit. And as we look at our own segment of customers, we are very underrepresented in the younger segments. And these are things that attract the youth to making those kind of investments. Uh, when I say young people, I mean probably less than 35 years. And then we can provide real-time information as to what their deposits are doing in the context of contribution to climate protection. So this is, this is one of the things that we're working on fairly embryonic. The final point I wanted to make is that essentially any form of green bond financing in India, and I think we have raised about $3.2 billion till September 27 for this financial, for this calendar year, against $82 billion or $84 billion, which I understand is a number overall is that the cost of financing is not necessarily cheaper. And so some people would argue that we are providing credit to the segment, but in effect, there is no transfer of credit risk either in, in the transactions we have seen. So then that brings the notion of how do you get that reduction done. And it probably seems to me some of the things that we could do is to try to push the regulators to provide some, provide some, uh, provide some benefits. We have a lot of mandated lending targets. We have capital adequacy requirements, and maybe there is opportunity to toggle with some of them to make those lending programs uh, more effective, I mean, more green sensitive. That broadly is what I have to say with respect to what, uh, what, what the area I've been working on. And obviously, I think the area of 
going down to the grassroots and then helping them, whether it is micro power grid or micro irrigation or, or solar power or any other form of, uh, you know, mechanisms and then figuring out a way in which you can bring in private money, you can bring in donor money, you can bring in a variety of things and then drive the cost down uh, seems to be a very, very exciting opportunity to work upon and very fulfilling as well. Thank you very much.